Hello and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, we're going to check out GNOME 43. The latest version of the popular desktop environment was released recently, and in this video, I'm going to give you my thoughts. And GNOME is actually my favorite desktop environment, so I generally try to closely follow its development. I really enjoy its workspace implementation as well as its simplicity. It's become my go-to desktop environment on all of my computers. Now, even though GNOME 43 is already out, depending on your distribution, you probably won't have this version yet. Usually what ends up happening is that when a new version of GNOME is released, distributions will update the version of GNOME that they provide to that version sometime during their next release cycle. For example, Fedora 37, which will be the next major version of that distro as of the time I'm recording this video, they plan on shipping GNOME 43 in that release. But I'm a little impatient. I really don't feel like waiting for the next wave of distros to hit the scene just to try out GNOME 43. So what I did was I wiped my studio PC and I installed GNOME OS. GNOME OS, if you are not already familiar with it, is a reference distribution that provides you with a quick and easy way to test out the latest GNOME releases. It's not a distribution of Linux that you'd use as your daily driver, but if you want to try out the latest GNOME software, GNOME OS is one option that you can consider. But what will probably turn off most people though when it comes to GNOME OS is that it requires you to wipe your entire drive. On my end, I didn't mind wiping the studio PC. I do that pretty much every week anyway. So what I did was I wiped that PC and I installed GNOME OS so I could give you guys a review of the latest version of the desktop environment, which is exactly what's going to happen in today's video. And since I'm reviewing GNOME 43 on GNOME OS, you're actually seeing GNOME 43 the way that the developers intended before Linux distros get a hold of it and tweak it. So of course, your experience might be different when your distro integrates GNOME 43, depending on how they go about doing that. Some distros will give you a more vanilla GNOME experience, while others heavily tweak GNOME into something else entirely. So let's check out GNOME 43. What I'm going to do is give you a quick look around the desktop, and then I'll dive into the new features. So let's get into it. So here I am on GNOME OS, so let's get logged in. And here we go. Here's GNOME 43 and all its glory. And you know what? At first glance, it doesn't really appear as though all that much is different. The look and feel of GNOME is pretty much the same. So we have our activities menu up here at the top left corner. We also have horizontal workspaces, as you can see, the same implementation that we've had since GNOME 40. So you might actually be under the impression that not all that much has changed. But as you keep looking deeper and deeper into this release, you'll notice more and more tweaks and refinements that make this desktop one of the best versions that's come out in quite a while. For example, if you've ever resized the file manager before, then the panel on the left-hand side might get in the way, but in this release, the panel actually goes into this little icon right here whenever you shrink the window size down enough. Now, of course, that feature isn't going to revolutionize anything, but it is a welcome addition. If nothing else, it actually makes the file manager look all that more modern. And speaking of modern, the files app, this file manager right here, was actually ported to GTK4. And without getting into too much detail, GTK is a very important component of GNOME, and it's been going through a bit of a transition. And the files app just now made that transition because in previous releases of GNOME since 40, well, the files app needed some love, and it really did get some attention in this release. In fact, I'll be talking more about new additions to the file manager later in this review. For those of you that haven't used GNOME before, my favorite feature of GNOME is how it handles workspaces. So for example, if you press the super key, that brings you to the activities overview, which shows you your workspaces. So you always have at least one extra workspace in addition to the one that you're currently on. So for example, we start here, and we also have an empty workspace here that we can go ahead and select and then we could launch some apps on this workspace. If I press the super key again, and then I go to the applications menu, this one right here, that shows me all of the applications that are currently installed on this computer. So for example, if I open up the system monitor here, now the system monitor is open on this workspace. I can switch between workspaces by holding control and alt and then pressing left or right. So as you can see, keyboard shortcuts make GNOME very easy to navigate. 
And another thing that I like a lot about the GNOME desktop is that most of the interface stays out of your way. Whenever I press the super key, we see the elements of the UI that's hidden normally. When you're at the desktop, you only see this panel up here at the top for the most part. But as you can see, when you press super, you get the panel on the bottom, you get some additional controls. And what's really cool is that you actually get an overview of all the applications that are open on that workspace anytime you view the activities overview. So if you are like me and you accidentally lose a window because it's behind something and you totally forgot that you put it behind something, well, pressing the super key makes it obvious which windows are open on that particular workspace. And in some ways, it could even be a fast way of switching between applications, although that's not the primary method that you would use to do that. Like other desktop environments, you would generally hold Alt and press Tab to do essentially the same thing. Now, none of what I just showed you when it comes to the Activities Overview and Workspaces is new. Those are just some of the reasons why I love GNOME so much. So if you're not already familiar with this desktop, well, then maybe you're seeing that for the first time. Now, I know a lot of you are already familiar with GNOME, so I'm not going to spend too much time going over an overview of what GNOME is. So let's go ahead and get into the new features. Now, one of the biggest changes this time around is the addition of quick toggles. So on the upper right hand corner, if I click on the status menu here, this particular menu is used for system related controls and toggles, such as setting the volume or restarting the computer. And it's been fine. It may not have the best status menu that I've ever seen, but it hasn't been the worst either. Again, it's been fine. The status menu this time around is way more useful as you can see. So if I overlay the previous version of GNOME and show you that exact same menu, you could totally see the difference. What you're seeing on the left is the status menu from GNOME 42. And then on the right, of course, we have the status menu in GNOME 43. The status menu on GNOME 42 and earlier also gave you access to, well, all the same controls. But to access these controls, it took several additional clicks. With this new version, the toggles are immediately available. So as you can see, I have the volume control like we've always had, and the shutdown icon and lock icons as well. But we also have access to the power profile, whether or not night light is enabled, airplane mode, dark mode, and so on. And what's also cool is that we have easier access to Wi-Fi. So I could turn it on or off, just like you're seeing here. But I could also click on the arrow, and that drops down and shows me the wireless networks that are in my local area. So, as you can see, for the most part, the status menu appears to have been completely redesigned. If nothing else, it's definitely a lot more useful now than it used to be. But my favorite new feature when it comes to the quick toggles here is the fact that we could select an output device for audio a lot easier than we were able to do before. So, for example, we have the volume control here, but if I click on the arrow, then what I could do is select what the output device is for the audio. Now this might not seem like a big deal, but we weren't able to easily select our output device before. We had to go several menu items deep in the settings in order to get to this point. But I really do like this because as somebody that creates a lot of content, I'm switching audio devices quite often. And the fact that that's easier to do has me very excited. I could really get used to that. Now, another new feature that I would like to discuss is the presence of some new default applications. So if I go to the Applications menu, for example, here under Utilities, we have Console. And then the other one is a brand new text editor. Now for the majority of GNOME's life, the default text editor has been gedit. Here we have the brand new replacement for gedit, which actually has a very amazing and unique name, so drum roll. This text editor is called Text Editor. I don't think I could have came up with that myself. Similarly, we have a brand new terminal app here. And if I bring up the About page, then you can see that it's been cleverly named Console. Now, boring names aside, I actually do like these apps quite a bit. For example, when it comes to the text editor here, we really don't have all that many features because it's a text editor. It doesn't really need a bunch of features, so it feels a lot more lightweight and a lot simpler because it is simpler. And I really like that because I feel like, again, a text editor doesn't really need all that many features. 
So if we view the settings page here, then we can see that there are several things that we can change. Nothing too amazing, but I think it gets the job done. We have some additional settings here. We can go to a dark style, for example. We can also open up tabs, as you can see here, if we want to edit more than one document. So while this text editor is not going to win any awards, I feel like it's simple, it gets the job done, and I actually like it. When it comes to console, it's pretty much the same idea. It's a lot simpler. We also have a similar tab menu here. So we could have multiple terminals open in one terminal emulator, which is not a new feature. Actually, the majority of terminal emulators have this feature, so we would expect that to be here. But we have some similar options here. For example, we could change the color mode. That's pretty cool. But for the most part, this is a terminal. That's it. It does terminal stuff. It lets you use the command line. It's simpler. And for me, I actually prefer that. So I could see myself actually using console over GNOME Terminal. I know that the lack of a bunch of features might not be something that everybody is excited about, but since I'm a person personally that prefers a simpler application, I think I'm going to prefer console over GNOME Terminal. Now, to be fair, console and text editor are not actually new in GNOME 43. They were added in GNOME 42. But the reason why I'm mentioning those in this particular video is because depending on how your distribution integrates GNOME, your distro may not have moved to the new apps as of yet as the default apps for their respective purposes. So it's possible that when your distribution integrates GNOME 43, you might actually be seeing these apps for the very first time. Now, another feature that I would like to show you is one that actually was a bit surprising to me. And this new feature in particular is actually in the file manager. So let's go ahead and open that back up. And here it is. So what I'm going to do right now is insert a flash drive. So I've inserted the flash drive and in fact, we see it right here. So what I could do now that apparently I wasn't able to do before is I can now right click on an external drive and then I could click format. So this window comes up right here. So what I'll do is just call it backup disk. So I'm not going to choose this option right here because that's going to result in a much longer process for formatting the drive. But what's really cool is that I have an option here for NTFS. So if you also use Windows, for example, you might really like that this option is present. On my end though, I'm going to choose this option for Linux only, extended for. Let's go ahead and create that. And the reason why I mentioned that this was a surprising feature to me is not because this is super brilliant or anything. I mean, it is useful for sure. I actually didn't know that this functionality wasn't present. I just never went looking for it. So I was actually surprised that this feature wasn't already present in GNOME. I do things like this from the command line, so I didn't go looking for it, but it was surprising to me that GNOME didn't already have this. But I guess, well, it's better late than never. Now, another thing that I would like to show you guys is GNOME Web, which is a web browser that isn't the most used web browser by any stretch. And some of you might not even be aware that the GNOME desktop has its own web browser, but if you didn't already know that, now you do. It's this icon right here. This app is called Simply Web, another very creative name, I know. But I think it's an effective name because it's a web browser, it's called Web, and I guess that makes sense. And the interface is very, very simple. I really like that. We have a big address bar here where we can type the name of the website we want to go to. So that's pretty self-explanatory. So here's the website for my channel right here. During my tests, it actually has been very pleasant. And it's come a long way since the last time that I've used it. Now, according to the release notes, GNOME Web now supports web extensions, which is great. But for some strange reason, it's not present here in the menu, and I don't know if that's a GNOME OS issue, but whenever your distro upgrades to GNOME 43, let me know in the comments down below if you have the option for extensions that's supposed to be in this menu. It's missing for me, but it's supposed to be here. So if you have it, let me know. But the fact that GNOME Web is supposed to be getting support for web extensions, I feel like that's something that really makes it more of a web browser that you can actually consider using every day, Instead of making like a lot of compromises to use GNOME Web like you had to do in the past, I think again, it's come a long way. And in GNOME 43, it's come even further. Now, when it comes to GNOME 43 in general, I really do like it. 
But then again, this particular computer is no slouch either. You can see that I have a number of CPUs here and a decent amount of memory as well. So at no point did this feel slow for me, but would it feel slow normally? I'm not sure that I would notice any performance improvements that GNOME might have integrated here because, well, it's kind of hard not to run fast on this particular computer. It's a decent computer. But what I can tell you is that it keeps up very well when it comes to my workload, at least. It's very responsive, like I've mentioned. So I could just move things around. It's just everything looks very, very smooth on my end. I'm not sure if that's going to come through in the video after editing, but it's a great desktop environment. It's been my favorite for quite a while and it's only getting better from here. Now, another thing that I'll leave you guys with is some improvements that have been made to GNOME software. So if your distribution doesn't have its own method of installing software, then GNOME software is going to be the way that you get software on your GNOME desktop. And randomly, what I'm going to do is just search for Thunderbird. It doesn't really matter which application that I choose. I just need to pick a random application to show you a new feature that I quite like. So for some reason, Thunderbird just popped right into my head, but I'll click on it. And here we can see that we have a dropdown. We've always had a dropdown. It just looks better now. This isn't the feature, by the way. This is just how you know where the software is coming from. In this case, it's a flat pack coming from Flathub, which is great. But let's go ahead and scroll down. And what I like is that we could get some information about the security of an application. So in this case, it's actually showing on safe because it's using a legacy windowing system. I don't really agree with that. I think using a legacy windowing system is probably a bad thing, but that in and of itself doesn't create a security issue per se. It can, but I think it's a little misleading. But anyway, if I click on that, we get more information in terms of permissions that the application needs in order to run. So you could actually look at this and make sure that you agree with what it's wanting before you install it. And I think this is another one of those features that probably should have been here all along. It's actually a little surprising that it's only just now been added to GNOME, but this is a great addition right here. I feel like this is information that you really need when you install an app. You really do want to know what it's going to do to your system before you install it and how secure it is. So I think it's a great thing to have that here. And I think that's a great addition to have in GNOME software because that's information that you really need to know. GNOME 43 so far is a great release. It doesn't contain features that are going to totally blow you away or anything like that, but it does include some tweaks and refinements all over the desktop that I'm sure are going to be quite welcome. Now, if you are already a fan of the GNOME desktop, then you're going to remain a fan of the GNOME desktop with this release. If you are not a fan of GNOME, then, well, this release isn't going to change your mind because GNOME 43 is more of the same. But what makes GNOME 43 so great is that it's GNOME being better at being the same. It's going down the same path, the same feature set, it's just refined and a better experience overall. And depending on your distribution, you might actually receive GNOME 43 soon. And if you do, I think you're going to enjoy it. There's nothing but improvements when it comes to GNOME 43, so there's no reason not to upgrade. If you're already a GNOME user, you're going to get the new release anyway, so there really isn't an argument of whether or not you should accept this new release and upgrade to it or skip it. It's the user interface for GNOME distributions out there, so you'll get this version at some point or another. And I think when you do, you're going to actually enjoy it. Again, if you're not a GNOME fan right now, then you're still not going to be a GNOME fan with this release. But if you haven't checked out GNOME yet, then this release might be a good jumping on point. Actually, any release of GNOME is a good jumping on point because there's no huge changes from one release to the next. So any time is a good time to try out GNOME. But this particular release is a good example. I think they've added some welcome improvements and I enjoyed checking it out. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.